Lauren, Americans are more obsessed with exercise than ever before, but are they really healthier? Author and historian Natalia Melman Petrozella takes a closer look in her new book, Fit Nation, The Gains and Pains of America's Exercise Obsession. Natalia joins us live. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Hi, Happy New Year. Thanks for having me. You know, uh, everyone thinking about working out after the first of the year. It is interesting, though, that as obsessed as Americans are with working out, we've never been unhealthier. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. Although, you know, you can measure health a whole bunch of different ways. But in terms of how much people exercise, it's absolutely true. We think working out is something great and that we should do it. Basically, everyone agrees on that, but not everybody does. Actually, most Americans don't exercise regularly. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, though, even for those who, who do, this uh, evolution in fitness corresponded to, to me with uh, the evolution in processed foods and giant portion sizes. How much is that interfering with our work at the gym? A lot. I mean, it's totally a myth that you can purely exercise your way to health or to beauty, depending how you define it. I mean, what we eat is so important and also how we live. You know, do you move? Do you smoke, et cetera? So the gym is just one piece of the equation in terms of living a healthier life, absolutely. You know, I always I, I joke about this with the guys, but I'm like, I wouldn't mind being back in the day when, you know, as a woman, I was expected, you know, not to strain myself too much to work out. <laughs> uh, there has been an evolution for women about perceptions of how you're supposed to look, right? And where do we stand now? I, that's so true, and I think that is such a good point, even though you say it humorously, because one of the things I look at in my book, Fit Nation, is that, like, on the one hand, it's this amazing thing that women are now, you know, not treated like delicate flowers that we can't run around or our uteruses will fall out. Uh -huh. <laughs> what people used to say. On the other hand, it's definitely a new set of expectations, right? That ever since like the 1950s or so with Jack LaLanne, women like can't just not exercise. We're increasingly expected to. And I'm like a huge gym nut. So I think like in many ways, I enjoy that. But we got to look at the other side too, that it is a pressure. Not only do you have to do all the other things in our life, but it's a relatively recent innovation that women are also expect to exercise. And what we are seeing, though, uh, it, women lifting weights and men in classes with women during some kinds of classes. But are there some workout fads that you think are complete BS or perhaps something that people are doing at the gym that is completely wrong? Um, I try to keep it positive. Um, so I don't want to call out any particular brand. I do think that, you know, p one thing that people do do wrong is not a particular kind of exercise, but thinking that one thing is going to be like the miracle that transforms their life. I mean, there definitely are programs that work really well for particular people. But I think this notion that a lot of us have at the beginning of the year that, oh, because I bought this machine or I have this particular program, now I'm going to go from someone who never liked exercise to somebody who's this fitness not like that's kind of unreasonable and i think that sometimes those you know unreasonable expectations are why two-thirds of people reportedly who make new year's resolutions to work out abandon them by like three weeks from now and so you know i as a fitness enthusiast and someone who studies this too like i think what's really the biggest mistake people can make the biggest thing people are doing wrong is setting up expectations that they're never going to fulfill like better to bring those down a little bit, be a little more realistic about what you will do, and then you might actually stick with it. See, I just walk up from the car to the seat. I'm fine. Yeah, well, there has to be something above zero. Well, <laughs> I got to start somewhere. <laughs> Natalia knows. I'll, I'll talk to her. Thanks so much. The book is called Fit Nation and the Gains and Pains of America's Exercise Obsession. You can get more at the website on your screen. Thanks, Natalia. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good day.